Hi, I'm Christine from Poise for Success. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about the general process by which I train freestyle skills and behaviors. I'm not going to get into the training of any specific skills in this video, but I want to provide a framework, kind of a step-by-step -step process that I generally go through with all of the different skills and behaviors that I train so that as I get into creating videos specifically about certain freestyle behaviors, you understand the terminology that I'm using when I identify different stages of the training process. This is something that I have sort of structured and named. So if it's a little bit different from terminology or the process that you've heard from other people, well, that's probably why. The first stage in training a canine musical freestyle behavior for my dogs is what I would call the preliminaries. The preliminaries are the skills that I'm going to incorporate into the training process that are not specifically related to the behavior itself. So, for example, a target stick. If I'm going to use a target stick to teach a spin or leg weaves, well, before I do that, my dog needs to be magnetized to the target stick. The dog needs to be ready for the target stick to be incorporated into that training. If I have to stop and go back and teach the target stick, then either I need to do that, I need to stop and go back and teach the target stick, or I need to train the behavior using a different technique. Some examples of preliminary skills that I work on with pretty much all of my dogs, following a lure, some dogs do need to be taught that. Being magnetized to a target stick, following a hand target, two paw targets, putting two paws on a pivot disc, clicker skills, knowing that the click means a treat is coming and that behaviors that my dog carries out can make the click happen. That needs to happen first. Basic shaping skills, capturing skills, things of that nature. A setup or reset cookie. I incorporate that into my training quite a bit. If I'm going to use any training props or aids, such as platforms or gates, my dog needs to be familiar with and comfortable with those, or if applicable, to know how they work and what he or she is supposed to do with it. So the preliminaries come first. That's not to say that I train all of the preliminaries before I get into training anything. I'm usually doing quite a few things concurrently with my dogs. But before I get into training something with my dog that requires a certain skill, I want to make sure my dog has that skill set first. Step two, introducing the behavior. This might happen in a number of ways. A lure, a target stick, the beginning stages of a shaping process. This is the stage where I might present the objective of the behavior to my dog. If it's something that I'm drawing the path of with a lure or a target or something of that nature, or I might be setting the dog up to create the behavior by creating the first pieces. An example of that is when I teach my dogs how to back up. So the first thing that I'm going to do is work on getting that first little step of backing up. That's gonna be my introduction to the behavior. In the case of a behavior that I'm going to be teaching with a lure or a target of some kind, such as a spin or a leg weave, I'm using the lure or the target to actually draw the path of the behavior and show my dog what it's going to feel like to perform that behavior. So what the introduction will be depends a lot on how I'm actually going to train the behavior. Oh, what a boy. Yes. 
Yes. Yes, good boy. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. Step three, skill building. That's where we go from the initial introduction of the behavior to the dog being able to carry out the behavior in finished form, although not necessarily on cue. So again, it might be going from the initial, I'm using a piece of food to move you in a circle in front of me, to me just giving a wave of my hand and my dog being able to perform the spin. Or it might be going from the dog just taking their foot and taking a teeny little step back onto the board to being able to take three or four steps back to the board. That's the skill building stage. Yes, good. Step four, putting it on cue. Once I have the behavior in a recognizable finished form, I start to put the behavior on cue. Generally speaking, although there are a few exceptions, my preference is to start with a physical cue and then if I want to put it on verbal, transfer that to a verbal cue. Like I said, there are some exceptions. Backing, for example, which I don't really have a physical signal for, I would start really with a verbal. I wouldn't really use a physical cue in there. Although you might say, maybe taking a step toward my dog or even perhaps putting my hands behind my back could be a physical cue, so it might work. It all just depends on how things go. But by and large, I start with physical cues, and then if I wanna put it on verbal, I transfer the physical cue to a verbal cue. Whichever you choose, that's the next step. Once the behavior is in a recognizable form, on cue. Circle. Yes, nice job, good. Good, good. Circle. Yes, good boy. Back. Yes, good boy. Step five, fluency in easy situations. So once the behavior is on cue, I'm going to start setting up easy situations for my dog to carry out that behavior. Easy perhaps because I have a bowl of treats on a shelf right where we're working. Easy perhaps because there are low or no distractions. Easy perhaps because I'm using big signals still to kind of get my dog to perform. Easy perhaps because I have food on me. Easy perhaps because I'm not asking my dog to really do complex things with the behavior. So maybe the dog is standing in front of me and my dog spins or perhaps I'm just chaining two behaviors together. I have my dog circle behind me and spin. I haven't brought a lot of movement into it. I haven't raised the criteria all that high at this point. It's really giving my dog the opportunity to practice carrying out the behavior on cue in situations where there's not a lot of other things kind of buzzing around in the dog's head. It's as easy as it's possible for me to make it. Step six, building complexity in criteria, generalization, and a higher degree of fluency. 
this is where I would do things such as start to fade the direct presence of reinforcers for the behavior. This is something where perhaps I would add in more complex body movement on my part. So now my dog's not just spinning as I'm standing still, but we're moving together and as my dog spins, I spin. I would bring in a higher degree of complexity after my dog has had a good amount of practice with the behavior in simpler contexts. Perhaps performing in more distracting environments, going out and performing the behavior in a demo or in front of people or on camera. Now, my dogs are on camera all the time, but if you're gonna video for titling submissions, you wanna make sure you bring performing in front of a camera into your training process at some point because it's different and dogs know that it's different. Believe me, it gets easier if you do everything in front of a camera, but I know not everybody does that. behaviors. I one time watched a video of myself performing an entire routine with one of my dogs and I counted all of the things that my dog did that would qualify as distinct behaviors and I counted something like 42 and that was in about a two-minute performance. So maintenance and practice of these behaviors it's important. It's important to keep your cues fresh. It's important to keep your dog's skills fresh. It really can be a use it or lose it proposition, particularly if you teach your dog something really flashy and complex, and then you don't do it for a while, you might find it goes away and you need to kind of go back and retrain it. It doesn't mean that you have to do everything all the time. It just means you need to practice what you've taught your dog on a somewhat regular basis. All of that may sound really daunting, but in practice it's not. Some of those steps go by very quickly. Some of them kind of happen on an ongoing basis with different behaviors. Freestyle is definitely a sport that you need to put quite a lot of training and practice into if you're going to do it well. But speaking in terms of these stages of training will give me the ability when I create videos to explain to you what I'm talking about in the video. Have any questions about the basic framework in which I train canine musical freestyle behaviors? Feel free to ask in the comments or join the Poise for Success Freestyle Facebook group. And I'll see you in the next one.